Hi everyone, so welcome back to the Loop of Coding. So in today's video, I'm going to show you uh, how to take a user input in a better way. So, um, all right, so let's get started. So as you can see right here, I have the demo of the two form right here, email and password. So when I click submit, it will get the result of this one. But let me show you the code and why I think this one should be better up, uh, improved. So here I'm using Next.js, so it's going to work with Create React app as well. So right here I have React's components, and right now we have two input right here, and one button right here. When we unclick on this one, it's going to console that locks uh, we have the state that we here. So each of the input will listen on the on chain, and it's going to update the state. So this is working fine, right, for some of you, but it's going to be a pro problematic if, let's say, for example, I have uh, this one right here. I have a lot of forms inside. So a lot of inputs. So then I have to increase the number of states to associate to that input. So that is imagine if you have a lot of input, the use state right here, that's going to be a lot. And that's what we don't want to do. And there's a better way that we can handle and get the uh, data from each of the input uh, in a better way. So let's see how we can do that. So to do that, I'm going to remove this one right here. So we're not going to do listen to on chain for every value. So right now I'm going to delete uh, this one back. Right. So right now let's start working on the better way to, of doing this one. So I'm going to remove the state. So we don't need the state. And then for the on click right here, we don't need to swell. So what we need to do is first we need to wrap this one up with the inside of form. And then you can uh, listen on submit of this one. So right here, instead of on click, we can just do it on submit instead. And the button right here, you can just do type submit right here. Okay. And then for this one, we're going to have, I'm going to change this one, handle, submit uh, with this one. Then with this one, first you need to do either prevents default. Uh, so this one is going to uh, prevents from page from refreshing. And the next thing is, how do we get the um, data of this one, of this form right here, of the input? So to get that, is one is, is going to be really simple. First, you're going to do, uh, you can get from form data, is going to be equal to new form data. And then you can just pass the target of it and of the form. And then to, to get from the value, so you can get uh, values, is going to be equal to objects dot entries from entry and then you can just do form data right here and then you can just console that locks the value that you have right here so right now i'm going to clear my terminal after i click right here so you can see same things with this one so we got the same uh value that we did in the previous uh, uh case so if i add another input right here let's say i'm going to do address i just name this one address um, and then type is going to be address as well. And then let's see. So this is my address, right? Let me see. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this one and the password, let's say I'm going to do random right here. So as you can see, when I click, we can be able to get the value right here. Pretty simple and pretty easy to get started. So it's, you can see with less boy, less codes and we use native HTML as much as we can, we achieve the same result. All right. So that is great. So the next thing you may ask, so when we do on chain, we be able to do some validation when the user types some input. So we give the user feedbacks. Okay. If they input something wrong or, or something like that. So we can actually do that the same. So for now, I'm going to erase the uh, address right here. We keep it same simple. We just use only the password and email right here. So with uh, the defaults, uh, with the default input, so you can have like something like require that you want the user to require input this one. Uh, next is you can put require for both of this one. So right now, if I do not pass anything, so when I try to submit the form, as you can see, it stops your user from uh, submitting the form. And on top of that, you can add the pattern. So let's say the pattern for the password. So for example, I'm going to grab the example from W3 school right here. So this one is the pattern. I'm going to copy this one. Uh, I'm not sure. So this pattern will do is like, it's going to be allow this input to have three character 
and then each and can contain only characters only if there's a number we not allow so right now if i try to add uh one to uh, add like more than three character when i submit you can see this is not much uh, requested format and but it's not a friendly feedback so you can actually um do something like this so you can do some styling so you can do the input uh, then you can do the class invalid if it's invalid what what you want to do you can just do border uh let's say one pixel solid red something like this so when it's invalid so you can see well we have this one so i think first we need to input uh, uh let's say focus and now we're gonna do outline to none so that's why so right now so when so this is an, an automatically checks for you as well so when i type one two it, it's when i type number is wrong so if i type uh so for now let's actually not do it with password so we can see it clearly so i'm just gonna do type text and here okay cool so right now if i type a uh, number it's gonna stay wrong if i edit the text as you can see when it's passed the invalid is false and then the form is going to normal form you can actually even style this one uh, let's say if it's wallet and then you can just do let's say green something like this so right now you can see the form is valid that's why we have the green basically this is up to you you can just do style like that if i add more this is not the normal uh required pattern it's gonna fail there you go so right now this one nice so that's how you do it you stick with the pattern of um stick with the pattern go with native as much as we can so you can see with less of code we can achieve um the same result as we want uh with using javascript by doing some validator uh hopefully that you learn something from this one so let me know in the comments what do you think about this approach and all right so see you in the next video peace